Hello viewers and welcome to our very special episode of Power of Print. My name is Isaac Honeyman and today we will discuss the steampunk novel World Shaker written by Richard Harland. And I'm Ripta, ain't it? So what's a steampunk novel? Is it a story about a punk with steam coming out of his ears? No, Rifter. According to Richard Harland, steampunk fiction is that fiction in love with old-fashioned gadgets and machinery. All those fiddly little bits of brass and glass and shiny, shiny metals. Well, that reminds me of the Juggernaut, actually, where the story The World Shaker took place. Yes, exactly. The Juggernaut is a huge, almighty, metal, multi-leveled machine that rolls across the landscape on wheels, destroying everything in its path. In this novel, it reminds me a little of how, my, how life might be in the Industrial Revolution in the 1790s. World Shaker is a fictional novel, of course, but it might, but might have a little bit of altered history in it. What do you think the novel's about? Well, it's about a different pathway from actual history, where Europe is a wasteland from war and the British have made a massive mobile city that is kilometres long and has many decks and is the largest human construction on the face of the earth. People have been living on the juggernaut for 200 years and it's all they know of. The protagonist, Colbert Porpentine. Oh yeah. He's a 16-year-old hero of the story who is meant to follow his grandfather's footsteps to take the role of the Supreme Commander. That's right, yes. While well, he has lived on a life of luxury with all the other members of the elite up class, upper deck, one day a female filthy riff comes into his life. Riff finds herself on the upper decks because she was going to be tortured and she and is trying to run away. Cole is outrageous and wants Riff to get out of his life but he finds how the filthies are being treated and goes every, against everything he knows to help Riff in her rebellion. I know Riff, she's my very excellent friend. I can tell you a thing or two about us filthies living in the darkness amongst these throbbing engines and the clanging clogs living in fear and danger below the decks just surviving the only thing that keeps us going is the plot to overthrow the upper decks yes rifter this great novel explores the power and class structure it seems if you are rich and a male you have the power as stated on page 75. Cole felt that he had been let into the secrets of a male world of power. Harlan uses many linguistic features and text structures in order to represent the characters and issues in this novel. Today, are we, today we're going to look at some of the, these features which are found in chapter 14 page 72. Whoa, he's up there, boy. What's a linguistic feature? Well, a linguistic feature is when the author, Harland, deliberately chooses language, feature, language in a way that positions the reader to feel a certain way. Language features include expanded nominal groups, similes, personification, symbolism, and alliteration to position the reader and help the reader build character. Let's look at an expanded nominal group, which are basically noun groups that give us give the reader more information about detail about the noun. Harland describes Queen Victoria's crown as a massive construction of steel and gold. Oh yeah, I get it. It's a language linguistic feature. It helps the reader create an image of an uncomfortably large and stupid crown on Queen Victoria's head. A huge crown that we learnt actually means nothing. Harland also say, says 
Queen Victoria seems to have difficulty focusing under the weight of her crown. Big usually means strong and powerful. And this is false because the king and queen have no power. As Cole discovers through the meeting with its king and queen at the gathering. Yes, exactly. The chapter starts with a large gathering of the richest families in the Juggernaut. Cole is walking with his grandfather, Sir Morpheus, to, to meet the Queen, queen Victoria. Sir Morpheus is tapping on his keys. The, the end of the chapter also, Morpheus is gesturing to his keys, symbolising his power, a power that belongs not to the king or, and ki queen, but to the supreme commander. This is an, another example of text structures in the novel. Uh, duh, these rulers are stupider than I thought. Is there more? Oh yes, there is more. This whole chapter is filled with text structures and di of direct speech, which is used to make the king and queen seem foolish. May I present my grandson, Colbert Porpentine. Your grandson? She studies them both, so you must be his grandfather. When I pass on, Colbert will make a worthy supreme commander. Oh dear, you're passing on? In the future, your majesty, not for many years. Prince Albert nods in approval. Glad to hear it, Porpentine. This stupid conversation shows one of the main ideas. Who has the power? It is in this chapter that Cole learns that the king and queen are actually not in charge or have any real power. He discovers that they are merely figureheads and actually quite stupid. Can you give us some more examples? In this passage, Harlan uses linguistic features such as similes, personification, symbolism, and alliteration to position the reader and build characters. Some examples of similes include as cunning as a rat, as majestic as a thoroughbred racehorse, and also when describing the queen, she looks less like sternness and more like a headache coming on. An example of personification include hungry for power and, and alliteration, firm and forceful chest. He also uses different text structures like direct speech and symbolism to explore the key issues in, of the book, like class structures and power. The techniques of using direct speech position the reader to understand characters, in the, this case, the king and queen, as idiots. The author positions the reader to believe that the royals are stupid and that the power of running the juggernaut is with the supreme commander. Wow, there's a lot going on up there, on the upper decks. Well, a lot of keeping the power with the powerful and you workers down there, just working like a slave, dog. At the end of the day, I learned that characters of World Shaker are created by Harlan's choice of language features, like similes, personification, nominal noun groups, and alliteration, and text structures like direct speech. We hope you enjoyed this pop-up media program, Power of Print. Remember to hit that subscribe button and like us on Facebook. Well, a lot of keeping cut. Wow, there's a lot going up on there. <laughs> this stupid conversation shows the main 
Oh. I can tell you a few things about us filthies living in the darkness amongst these. I can tell you a thing or two about us filthies living on the living in the darkness. <laughs> oh boy. See you later. I can tell you two things about these. Cunning as a rat. Cunning as a rat. Cunning as a rat. Uh, duh! These rules are stupider than I thought. Uh, duh! These ballers are stupider than I... Ballers? What's like a headache coming on? <laughs>